try this again because I'm just reading my little heart out and I realized that my video had stopped. So I'm gonna try this again, but I'm just gonna leave it on one screen when I did the screen share. So um, we're, I'm just gonna pick up from liar. And it's like, every time I try to do something for his ministry, he comes and attacks my health. I hate him so, so much. Anyways, anyway. So for September 3rd, uh, the, uh, Bible in a Year, Daily Bread. And if you if you Google, you know, uh, Daily Bread, Bible in a Year, September 3rd, it'll bring up everything that's in this little book that you can get and you can also go to their website and request it and they'll send you one like either quarterly or monthly for free well actually if you get one every month i think they ask for a donation but if you get one every for every three months you know one book four times a year it's free but it's all good so it, the uh the insight uh, scripture for today is uh second corinthians 3 1 through 6 and what it's saying is, let me bring that over here. I'm not going to try to be clipping, clicking through screens like I did last time in my video again. It says, do we, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, oh. Oh, 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 see, I already did this once. I'm sorry, Father. Father, I just ask that you bless the reading of your word tonight. And I just thank you, Lord, that we're able to do this without persecution, without worry that people will break in and either kill us or arrest us. And Lord, and while we have this freedom available, help us to share your word with those that do not know your son. And I thank you that we have the ability to do this. And Father, let your word just re reach our hearts and to speak to us and, and give us discernment, knowledge, and understanding of what you're speaking to us through your living word. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I always, always pray that before I read. I almost forgot. I Well, I already did once, but starting again do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of com commendation to you or letters of commendation from you you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men clearly you are an epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart and we have such trust through christ toward god not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Amen. Okay, let me move that now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because this video is not about looking at Debbie. It's about reading his word. So move this out of the way so I can share my screen. Oh, no. It's not going to let me share my screen now. Talk on it. I hate Facebook so much right now. Okay. Well, isn't that special? Okay. So you get to stare at Debbie. I'm sorry, guys. And my bed's a mess because I'm getting ready to change my sheets. <sighs> Satan's really been messing my mind so much. Okay. So for the story for today is the blessed mark, mask. And it says, as the mask mandate requirements during the pandemic loosened, and I was actually going to get a drink before I went into this. I'm sorry. I struggled to remember to keep a mask handy for where they were still required, like my daughter's school. One day when I needed the mask, I found just one in my car, the one I avoided wearing because it had blessed written across the front. I prefer to wear masks without messages, and I believe that the word on the mask I found is overused. But I had no choice, so I reluctantly put the mask on. And when I nearly showed my annoyance with the new receptionist at the school, I caught myself, partly because of the word on my mask. I didn't want to look like a hypocrite walking around with blast scrawled across my mouth while showing impatience to a person trying to figure out a complicated, a new complicated system. 
Though the letters on my mask reminded me of my true witness for Christ, the words of scripture in my heart show uh, should be a true reminder to be patient with others. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, you are a letter from Christ, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts, 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. The Holy Spirit who gives life, and that's verse 6, can help us live out love, joy, and peace. And yes, patience, Galatians 5.22. We're truly blessed by his presence within us. What are your words and actions saying to others? How can you represent Christ in what you do today? Dear Jesus, with each person we encounter, help us to share what it means to live for you. And as I'm saying these, what are your words and actions saying to others? I just got into it with my spouse <laughs> a little bit ago. So I'm feeling like a hypocrite right now. But, you know, what do you do? You're married, you're married. Uh, it, is, it is what it is. Anyway. Um, Okay, now it's just, Satan's just straight messing with me, really. Okay, so we're starting with Psalms 140 through 142. Uh, Psalms 140 is prayer for deliverance from evil men to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asps is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me. And cords they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Selah. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. Selah. As for the head of those who surround me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Psalm 141. Prayer for safekeeping from wickedness. A psalm for David or psalm of David. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness, and let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. And then 142 is a plea for relief from persecutors, a contemplation of David, a prayer when he was in the cave. I cry, to the, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. In the way in which I walk, they have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. 
Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Amen. And then for the New Testament, the reading is 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 20. And I apologize if I read it too fast, let me know. I, I'm a fast reader. Um, I have a bookmark. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Um, but Tom Hughes wrote it, something with the masses. I, Mark of the masses, I think is what it's called. Marking the masses, yes. And I'll probably have that read in the night. So I, I, I read fast. So if I read this too fast, let me know. Anyways. Yeah, okay. So it's chapter 14, starting at verse 1 through 20. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Tongues must be interpreted. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Or by teaching? Question mark. Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So likewise you, oops, I sent it too soon. I didn't catch the last word, sorry. And mouse vanished, oh my gosh. Who you utter by the tongue, Words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks. And he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Even so, you. Since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Tongues assigned to unbelievers. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. I, okay, I guess I put uh, Psalm 142 twice. Okay, so that's the end of the reading. Okay, so that's, that's, I guess, the end of the reading for today, and I will not be missing, you know, if I have to pre-record it and then just post it, I will do that, and I'll make sure that I have my screen shared, because I don't want, it's not, it's not about me, you know, it's about, you know, I like to have the words up on the screen so that you can read along with me, that's the whole purpose of doing this, 
So, Father, I just ask that you that you bless the reading and the hearing of your word tonight. And I just pray that that someone was edified by these words, Lord, and that someone did get a message from you that you spoke the word they needed to hear. Lord, I, I pray that this is what someone needs to, to help them to get into your word and to read so that they don't feel alone in reading, that they have someone to read along with. Lord, let this be a blessing to you and let us be a blessing for you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name and I pray that anyone that watches this is blessed by it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pray that you have a blessed night. Know that Jesus loves you and I love you. And remember, there is never a pit too deep that Jesus will, is not willing to pull you out. You've not, there's nothing you could do that he is not willing to forgive you for. He knocks at the door of your heart. Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. And if a man hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter in and sup with him and he with me. Amen. And just know that time is so very short. Don't let the world lie to you. Don't let the world deceive you. Acts 2.38, Peter said, unless you repent and are baptized by the Holy Spirit, you must repent and believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God and that he lived a sinless life and he died for our sins and rose again. And only through him and his crucifixion and through him and him crucified on the cross and, and the, the blood that was shed for us that we can be saved and have eternal life with the Father. Amen. Shalom.